Okay, sorry about that guys, I got called away for a while. Um, right, we were trying to access our um, player health script in here and what we're going to do, go back into player health, um, we'll just actually chuck the um, instance in uh, void awake. So cut that out, chuck it in there. And then in our um, enemy AI, we can just add the damage straight in here. So he damages the player, but because this is getting called in the uh, update and the attack player here, so it's going to be calling that really, really fast. So basically update runs uh, once every um, frame. So if you're running at 60 frames um, a second in your game, it's going to be calling it 60 times a second. So it will just damage the player really, really fast over and over and over again. So we need to make some kind of timer. And generally I just use floats for this, but um, I think what we'll do today is we'll use an IE numerator. And we'll call this attack time. And then we will um, call this in here. Attack time. <clears throat> I just call it now because I'll forget otherwise. So yeah, when we attack the player, we're going to call that. And so the first thing we want to do, once we call this, we don't want to add the damage straight away because we're playing the um, the animation here. So we need to know asset zombie attack. So it's uh, 43 frames long. So we could just say, first of all, yield return new wait for seconds. And we'll just say uh, 0 0.5, we can just round it off, that'll be fine. And then we want to add the damage. So in our player health, we want to, um, we want to call this function here. So we can say player health dot singleton dot player damage and we need to pass in um, a float here because we have a damage float so we'll make that up here in public float uh, damage amount and we'll just say I'll say 35 just for testing purposes so that we can kill the player <clears throat> um, pretty quickly but we can change that in the inspector because it's public so damage amount and then after we've done that we want to wait for a certain amount of time before we attack again so we'll, um, do a serialized field Float and call this one attack time, and that can equal uh, two seconds for now. And because we serialize it, of course, we'll be able to change that in the inspector, even though it's private. And then we'll just copy this and we'll um, pass in our attack time. And yeah, what we might also do, it's probably a good idea, is to have a bool, we'll make it public for now. Public bool can attack equals true. And then 
before we call, we, instead of just saying else, we'll attack the player. We'll say else if can attack. So if can attack is true, which it starts off true, so he'll be able to attack straight away. Then we'll call this and it will run the coroutine. And then we'll wait 0.5, attack the player, then wait the two seconds. And we'll say uh, can attack equals false because then <clears throat> once it starts playing this coroutine, we it'll just keep playing it over and over and over again if can attack is true or if we didn't have this boolean. So the coroutine would just keep getting repeated and it wouldn't work properly. So it wouldn't get to play all the way through and we'll just make can attack equal true at the end. That should be okay, I think. Let's have a look. Can attack. Yeah, all right, let's have a look. So I'll go to the player health and we've got this um, current health, doesn't need to be public, but I've made it public so that we can see what's going on. You see that it automatically sets to 100. And of course, it's doing 35 damage every two seconds. And yeah, and it's just gonna keep going down, minus because we haven't told it anything else. So in our player health, we need to say, we'll cut this out. And we'll just say if current health is greater than zero. So only if we've got more than um, zero health will take damage. Um, but it could still go below zero because if you know if we're taking 35 and we've got 30 health um, and it's above zero, it's going to say okay, I'll take off 35. So then it'll be minus five. So as a fail safe, we'll just say um, current health equals zero. So on the next frame, it should automatically, yeah, it should automatically turn it back to zero once it goes below zero. And then we'll, um, we'll need a death function. So if, um, I actually want a boolean too, just like for the enemy, because it's it's very handy to be able to easily know when a when an enemy or player is dead, in my opinion. So bool um, is dead equals uh, false, and then we could actually just put that in there as well. Current health equals zero. Is dead equals true. And debug dot log player is dead. And we need to call that in there of course. Okay, so we have that now, and in our enemy AI, um, where are we here? So, yeah, if you if you can attack, and um, the player is not dead, we don't do we we yeah we probably don't want him to attack when the player is already dead. So we can say, and player health dot singleton dot is dead. And we want it to be the opposite of that. So is not player health dot singleton dot is dead. So the player is not dead. Then we want to attack. And also, just for a safeguard, we'll just say um, 
void not on disable disable enemy it's always really handy to have a, a function you can call to disable the player or the enemy so we may as well start this off now we'll probably make it public later on but so when the enemy's disabled um what was that bulls go can attack yeah so can attack's gonna be false obviously can attack equals false um let's just disable all the animations as well and yeah that should be fine for now so we'll say else uh, disable enemy we should have covered most of our bases now okay so let's go ahead and um, see if this actually works so you come up Okay, it's not quite what I wanted. Um, so maybe. We'll just make that one actually. We'll just see how it goes at one second. Really give that animation time to play out. Oh god, and we just crashed. And we hadn't saved. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Okay, so we should be alright because I saved, the scripts should all be fine, piss off GeForce. Um, so let's just go back and see. Just, um. I'm going to do 0 0.5 and just going to take that out for a second. Although we will be using that at some stage if we don't use it now. I just I think that might be the issue. Oh god, I hate it when I forget. Okay, there we go. It's a bit better. So, because we're only calling that after waiting two seconds, it kind of goes below zero and it, it takes, it waits the two seconds until the zombie attacks before it um, puts the health back at zero instead of minus. So we could put it in update and it's probably not the ideal thing to do, but... Um, Just for now. Is less than zero. Current health equals zero. 
that should fix that problem. Okay, so it's not going to go below zero now, which is good. And we get our um, debug.log down here saying that the play is dead, but the enemy is still attacking us when we're dead, which isn't a big deal, but you know, I prefer he didn't. So why is he still attacking us if... Um, get rid of that. Disable the attack. What about that? <clears throat> um, oops. So if he is dead, then we want to disable him. So, sorry about stuff around here, guys. So it should all work fine until we're dead. Okay, so he had to play his last um, co-routine. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. He stops now and we'll be dead now. So, um, yeah, I can live with that. Okay, so our, um, our bull is dead. Our health is at zero and it says that we're um, dead there as well. So, yeah, that should basically be it for today. We'll... Um, we'll improve on this as we go along but for now that's not too bad the enemy can actually um, chase after the player attack the player and he can also um, kill the player so yeah the basics are starting to get set up and we'll just keep going along and um, improving it until we've got something that's uh, actually fun to play all right guys thank you for watching and I'll um, see you in the next one cheers